Welcome to another instructional video from OWL, the wise choice in fiber optic test equipment. I'm Professor Jim Powers. This video will demonstrate how to measure insertion loss on a multimode fiber optic link using a silicon zoom to optical power meter and a dual OWL 850 multimode light source. There are four main steps in the process of measuring insertion loss of any fiber optic link. These steps are gathering link information and accessories, checking the equipment and accessories for proper operation, setting an optical reference, also called zeroing, and then taking insertion loss measurements. Before beginning any fiber test, the user must gather the necessary link information and accessories required to complete the test. Link information is used to help determine how much loss is acceptable for the fiber under test, otherwise known as a link budget. Optical loss measurements are compared to the link budget to determine if the fiber is good or not, which is the same as saying pass or fail. There are five key parameters that apply to any fiber optic test. First is the fiber type, which will be either single mode or multi-mode. In the case of multi-mode, this could be either 62.5 or 50 micron. Next is fiber length. It is important to know how much fiber is in the link under test in order to determine how much loss is acceptable for that particular length of fiber. Some OWL testers can be used to measure the end-to-end -end length of the fiber automatically, including the fiber OWL 4 bolt optical power meter. Otherwise, the user can use jacket markings, installation documents, or other length measurement methods such as OTDR. For best results, avoid estimating the fiber length whenever possible. Third is number of connections. A connection is the point where two fiber connectors mate together, such as in a patch panel, wall plate, or mating sleeve. Fourth is the number of splices, which can be either fusion or mechanical. For the purpose of calculating a link budget, most cabling standards do not distinguish between fusion and mechanical splices. Lastly, the user must determine what wavelengths they will test at. For multi-mode, this is 850 and or 1300 nanometers, and for single mode, this is 1310 and or 1550 nanometers. When using a micro owl or fiber owl optical power meter, these parameters can be entered directly into the device to calculate the link budget. However, if the link budget needs to be calculated manually, this is done simply by adding together the fiber loss, connection loss, and splice loss. Fiber loss is given in dB per kilometer and varies based on the fiber type and wavelength. To calculate fiber loss, multiply the fiber length in kilometers by the fiber loss. Connection loss is the number of connections multiplied by the dB loss per connection. Splice loss is the number of splices multiplied by the dB loss per splice. Most users will follow the fiber, connection, and splice loss specified in cabling standards, such as the TIA-568. It is also helpful to determine the connector type used in the link under test, which will help determine the right reference cable configuration to use. For accessories, it is highly recommended to keep at least three patch cables on hand, since there are three reference methods, one jumper, two jumper, and three jumper. Mating sleeves may also be required for some link configurations. Refer to OWL's video on reference methods for more information. Finally, if testing multi-mode fiber, the launch cable attached to the light source will also need to be wrapped around a mandrel according to cabling standard specifications. Refer to OWL's video on mandrels for more information. As you can see, we've uh, gathered all the equipment and accessories we will need for this particular insertion loss measurement. Uh, in this case, we're using a zoom to, or I'm sorry, a silicon zoom to optical power meter and a dual OWL multi-mode light source uh, with uh, only the 850 nanometer wavelength installed. Uh, this particular kit is designed specifically for multi-mode only at 850 nanometers. Now, uh, in order to begin this insertion loss measurement, we should first probably check the equipment and accessories, the patch cables here, um, for proper operation before we begin. Now, as you can see, we have we also have two patch cables. We have a uh, a straight cable. This is the power meter cable. It will stay with the with the uh, with the zoom two here. Uh, when it connects into the fiber link when we're taking our measurement. This other cable is wrapped around a mandrel according to cabling standards and will stay with the light source on, on its side of the test. 
So first thing we should do is test the, the power meter cable. Um, and we do this by taking the cable and simply connecting it between the two optical ports here. Okay, once we have this connected, we can power the equipment on simply by pressing the power button on each unit. And on the dual owl, you'll notice that the 815 nanometer LED is lit here. Uh, that means that the, uh, the output wavelength is 815 nanometers. On the Silicon Zoom 2, however, you will see that it does not read 850. It actually reads 650. Um, so to change the wavelength, we simply press the wavelength button one time and changes it to 850 nanometers. Now, the reading on the screen we get here is uh, minus 20.27 dBm. Uh, when we're checking our patch cables, we want to make sure that we are, are uh, looking at our optical power in dBm. Um, in this case, uh, since we're using a 62.5 micron uh, multi-mode cable, um, our target value is about minus 20 dBm. That's, that's where we want to... Uh, where we want to be close to that that power level. And in this case, we see we're we're pretty close. We're a little bit low, but that's fine. Um, now, if you're doing uh, 50 micron cables, remember that because it's a smaller core, less light will be getting into the cable, which will lower the uh, the optical power level here. And so, in the case of 50 micron, we'll typically drop about 3 dB. So, our target value for 50 micron is minus 23 or so. Uh, but in this case, uh, 62.5, target value minus 20. Um, we are very close to that level, so uh, we can be assured that this patch cable is okay to use for our test. So we simply just disconnect it from the testers, and then we'll set it aside for use later. Uh, we, will, we will come back to it uh, when we're actually doing our, our loss measurement. Now what we do is we connect the reference cable. Okay, this, this is the cable that will stay attached to the light source. Um, and again, remember our target value is around minus 20 dBm. As you can see, it's reading almost exactly minus 20 here. It's a little bit higher, which is still okay. So we know that this reference cable is, is also okay. Uh, once we know that, we can simply zero out the, uh, uh, the power meter by pressing and holding this units slash zero button. So we hold it. You'll see that it zeroes out the tester, and now you see that the reading uh, changes to zero dB. Once we have set a reference, uh, the the uh, the meter will change to dB mode, which is which is actually uh, the way to measure loss of your cable. Okay. Now, once we've zeroed our equipment, um, there are, there are really two things we need to be concerned with, uh, particularly with the light source. The first thing is, is once the reference is set, you do not disturb this connection here. Do not disconnect from here. Uh, if you do, and then you reconnect, uh, you're uh, opening up the possibility of making a different amount of optical power come through the cable, and which, which, will, which will change what the, the zoom thinks is the reference. In that case, you'd have to re-zero and start testing all over again. Likewise, if you allow this cable to unwrap from this mandrel at any point, this will also change the reference, and you will also have to uh, start over, basically, from scratch. But since we, um, since we have zeroed our, out our equipment, um, we can uh, disconnect the, uh, the patch cable from the power meter. It's okay to do so. And we take the light source with its reference cable to one end of the link, and we'll pretend that this side is in one closet and then this side is in another closet. Uh, we'll take the, the power meter with its cable to the other side of the link. And we can connect that in at any time here. Okay, now one thing in particular about the display here that we see, we see the word low. Uh, this is actually uh, what we're supposed to see, um, either low or very low power level. Uh, this is because there, there's no light coming into the detector, uh, obviously, because we're not connected to, into anything. Once we connect into our link, we will we'll actually see an optical power reading. So now that we've taken uh, the units to opposite ends of the link, uh, what I'm going to do is demonstrate how to take measurements. Now, to um, help demonstrate this procedure, I have... 
uh, have this this little box here. It simulates a fiber link. So if you can use your imagination, just think, uh, pretend that you see a six-port patch panel on the power meter side, and then you also see a six-port patch panel on the other side of the link. Typically, these are going to be in different closets. So we have our, our fiber link that we're connecting in, and usually what we want to do is start with uh, port number one. So we'll plug into port number one on both sides, and if we have a uh, proper continuity, we will get a, get a reading here. Now, as you can see, we have a reading of minus 1.97 dB. What this means is we have nearly 2 dB of loss in this link. Now, whether or not this is good uh, depends on what our link budget is. Um, hopefully, we have, we have developed a link budget um, based on an er uh, some of the earlier, um, or some of the steps I mentioned earlier in this video. But let's just say that for, for our purpose, this link um, has a link budget of 3 dB. So, since we are not uh, exceeding our 3 dB link budget, we can say that this link is good. What I'm going to do is I'm going to demonstrate testing all the rest of these fibers at this time. And finally, we connect into uh, port number six. Uh, if you were if you were noticing, uh, all of these readings uh, did not exceed our 3 dB link budget, so we can be assured that all six of these fibers are installed properly and will uh, will support the application uh, for which this uh, uh, fiber was installed. So, uh, so basically, uh, we're we're finished with our uh, with our insertion loss test, and we can simply disconnect the testers. Uh, from uh, from the link and if we recorded our results on a piece of paper uh, we can simply make a, a simple test report out of those test results this has been another instructional video from owl the wise choice in fiber optic test equipment for more information about additional instructional videos or owl fiber optic test equipment in general please visit owl's website at owl-inc.com I'm Professor Jim Powers. Thanks for watching.